You are tuned into the new Old Heads podcast, premiered every Thursday at noon at bringingdowntheband.com and brought to you by No Bad Ideas, Coleman Dental, Printfinity, and Indie CD and Vinyl. Support the new Old Heads by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com slash newoldheads. You are now tuned in to the new Old Heads podcast. I am Major 7th. To my left is the one and only Longevity. How are you, sir? I'm feeling great. Good. How are you? I didn't, I didn't sense that much energy there, but I, I'll take that. To my right, the incomparable DJ Spools. How are you, sir? Hello, Michael. I'm doing well. How are you? Good, man. Good to see you. You too, man. It's been a great weekend. Yes, it has. I want to really quickly thank Indie CD and Vinyl. Yes. Um, Andy and Annie and the whole staff for not only having you know two great days of Record Store Day, but also being a partner uh, of our podcast. Yes. And allowing us to do this today. So thank you. You guys, thank you very much. I definitely yeah. appreciate them. It's nice to uh, actually get a chance to meet them this weekend. Um, this is my first time. Well, actually, yesterday was my first time coming into the store, and you know, being You've been a, missing out, man. I have. Uh, being a music head, I've actually had a chance to kind of walk around and look. And this place is amazing. They got a lot of great stuff. Uh, the Biggie joint really threw me back yesterday with the cassette tape and the, the Big, Big Mac. Mac. Yeah, for Craig Mac. I, I wonder if there's any of those left. Andy, Annie, if you guys happen, <laughs> or staff, if there's any left, I'll, I'll buy it today. Yeah, I, that, that's uh, that's classic material there. So, um, How Did you get to pick anything up yesterday? Either of you guys um, during, obviously, I know you guys were busy, but did you get to do any perusing? Or? I didn't, but I, I plan on doing that today. I don't know about loan, but I plan on doing that today. I did. I did. Uh, no, I didn't. <laughs> yeah. it, yesterday was like running around yeah. all over the place. And uh, so I didn't actually get to check really anything. Yeah. Um, you know, loans are very busy, man. He was running the stage and everything. So, yeah. you know, I get that. I Dude, I was psyched, man. I got up here and uh, with Jay Moore early. Yeah. And found a couple of uh, these Robert Johnson 10 inch like represses classic material yeah man these old blues records super happy about that found a copy of bob james one yes don't know how that happened lucked into that <laughs> um got something for my fiance she's a big shaky graves fan if you guys are familiar i gotta step my game up i'm sleep on i'm sleep on yeah, that but i gotta I step got my her, game up got her one of those and then we got the new leon bridges album haven't listened to it so can't wait to hear that you know spools awesome. you and i you and i were talking outside the store yesterday about uh how frequent Bob James has been sampled in hip hop, man. That's that's crazy. It's insane. I mean, I'm, I'd say so. You got what? James Brown probably is number one. I got James number one. Break beats alone. Mm -hmm. I got James number one. But from a production standpoint, I'd have you got to put Bob James at like two or three, right? I mean, I, I'm, what you think, Lone? He's got to yeah, be top I mean, five minimum, right? Nautilus has been sampled. I don't know how many times. Right. Yeah. Right. That whole album one has just yeah. been. I mean, people have made people have made their whole albums off of that. You know, yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. You know, the Isley brothers have been sampled a lot, obviously, you know, Al Green and, and people like that. But, you know, Bob James is up there, dude. I heard a rumor. I was think I was telling you this yesterday. Yes, you did. I heard a rumor. I don't know if this is true, but um, that Bob James either has lived in Indianapolis or currently does or has a home here somewhere. Dude. Don't know how if true that is or not. But anyway, that would um, be really, really cool to just run into Bob James. Yeah. Like at the alley cat or something, I'd buy him around if I as many as he I'd wants. Buy him ten <laughs> rounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I need I need to talk about sample clearance, so we need to get get him whatever he wants in there, food, drinks, whatever. While I we're see. on the topic about just very quickly, if you guys ever watched the um, DVD Scratch, it's heard a, of like it? A have documentary. Not watched I'm it. sure it's sold here at Indie CD and Vinyl. I bought my copy here probably twelve years ago, 10, 12 years ago. So where um, there's a part in there, if I'm not mistaken, that in the extra scenes that they talk to bob james oh we're okay. okay and it's about um it's kind of like premiere is talking and then bob james is talking but the one thing that i thought was interesting that he said because a lot of people that get sampled don't like the fact that they're sampled right uh, like they're not a fan of it so bob sure. james was like i've got no problem with it uh, or if i recall correctly he goes but the part that gets me is they take the part they take the parts of the songs that I think aren't the best parts of the songs. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's like, you know, you've got all this stuff, you know, you got all this great, these great riffs and these great things that we have on these albums, but they leave those alone and they take something else. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was just interesting <laughs> to hear him, of all people, say that. Yeah. I, I, it's interesting because uh, obviously I teach 
at Decademics. Shout right. out to Decademics. Um, so I teach production, and even in my class last week, we talked about um, we talk about looping and chopping and the difference between all that and right. audio and stuff like that. But uh, when you go to like dig for a sample, it's a different mindset than when you dig to like listen to enjoy. Yes. So you're looking for like open spots in the record or something where the drums aren't clashing with the melody if you just want to take the melody or the vocals are cool. So that's probably, you know, yeah. I wonder how much Bob James has sampled. <coughs> Excuse me. That's, I mean, <laughs> you, you, bring up a good, you bring up a good point. I mean, I'm sure the f what he refers to as the best parts are the ones where maybe there's more elements all going together yeah. at the same yeah. time, which to your point, Sean, for a producer might not be the best thing to sample. You want just drums or you want just a melodic sample right so well, yeah, you, you need that if that's what you were saying if that's plus you need saying. space for like an mc to to get on there or a singer to to fill that pocket so if you got all this crazy cool instrumentation there's like no room for it's that a little crowded yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. The, cli the climax of those records to me listening just as a consumer are dope like i love that you know when everything builds and goes up but it's hell to chop because there's no pockets in there to leave room for the artist to come in and rap over so uh, I think we, like Lone said, we, we're thinking the total opposite. You know what yeah. I'm saying? We want to find something, you know, that's that's back in the cut, the B sides, not the singles, you know, stuff like that. So we can, you know, really try to rearrange those and come up with our own interpolation of that same song. Um, but it's dope that he actually said that because mm -hmm. I, I don't know how many people would be like, "Yo, just go find the best part," and you know what I mean? Like yeah. that's that's right. that's different. And I'm not sure if he was alluding to saying like go do that but, he's, but right. i think he was more surprised that that's not what people do fair sure. enough yeah and to that sense. kind of along these same lines i'm actually starting to finally i was uh myself scoot dubs and uh, scoot. J diff were sean's guinea pig students for his uh, production <laughs> class a couple absolutely. years absolutely yes so now i'm finally starting to play around with uh the program i have and i'm oh, gonna nice. need some help my idea is what i'm doing is i'm fine i love classic rock right mm -hmm. amongst other things so I'm finding open class and rock, classic rock guitar riffs to chop. Nice. To be able to use otherwise. And I'm struggling. So <laughs> <laughs> I know how to chop it. I can chop it. But as far as doing different stuff. Are you trying it, to uh, are you trying to like make like production joints out of them? Or are you trying to make edits or what? I want to chop that guitar. Like I want to chop a guitar riff out. Just the guitar. Mm -hmm. Find some drums. You know, do that. And then be able to, you know, piece it together or sequence it together into an actual beat. Ah, I got you. You got friends that are very well equipped to do I know, that. Sir. I know that. I know that, man. So I'm slowly getting there. So yeah, but uh, yeah, we can. Yeah, we can definitely. I'm can stuck do that. like Chuck right now. I don't <laughs> know, my shit doesn't. Sound, my stuff doesn't sound very good. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, we definitely can do that. Matter of fact, that sounds fun. We'll have to, you know, schedule some time to possibly do that. Shout out to Red August. Uh, Mike, he's he's on the camera. He's a very very busy man, but always finds time uh, to help us out and give us multiple angles for our camera work. He also does great camera work, photography as well. So if you see the guy in the green hoodie, make sure you talk to him. Uh, takes amazing photos, does great things. He does um, everything. He'll do um, weddings. He yeah. does weddings. Bot he misses, does bot, you know. bot mitzvahs. He you does those. If you happen to be shooting an adult film, he Michael, does those Michael as well. Help you there. So yep. He'll do picnics, he'll do family reunions, uh, you know, bike rides in the park, whatever. He'll do all those. So shout out, shout out to Red August. Uh, he, he definitely has enhanced our, our program 100%. Yeah. So um, this is uh so this is technically what 129 nine uh, so 129 straight episodes yeah kind yeah. of a one off but it still this counts is like a bonus 128.5 there you it's go yeah, yeah. 128.5 works for me yeah. um. But no, man, this is this is different, but in a good way. Yeah. I like I like the atmosphere. We're all music heads, so you know I feel at home when I'm in a place like this. And, Me too, man. Uh, they've opened their arms to us since yesterday, so this is really really dope. Um, this is the kind of place you don't want to if you're a music head <laughs> of any kind. Like I don't, I had a hard time leaving. Like I don't want to. I don't want to like, spend all day in the stores like this, man. Especially this one. Like it's. It's incredible, man. Yeah, it's a little bit of everything, man. You don't, you know, sure. whatever you like, I'm, they, they got it. So. I'm excited to uh, go through the jazz section. I didn't get a chance to yesterday, but I heard the jazz section is dope. So I'm, any Coltrane records that you guys have, please set those to the side. They got a whole section of Coltrane <laughs> over there. I man. would definitely like to look through those. Um, I'm looking for my favorite things. You just and missed uh, Rob Dixon playing. Oh, word. Okay. With, uh, Sleepy was playing drums and. 
Oh, yeah, shout, shout out to Sleepy, Sleepy yeah. man. Yeah. 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 Great so. drummer. Yeah. Um, who I saw somebody in line yesterday picking mm-hmm. up Coltrane's Love Supreme. Yep. Classic. Yep. So there's a guy uh, actually. Um, he bought one of our albums for the section leaders yesterday. He had Led Zeppelin box set. I saw that up there. Uh, crazy man. A little I think over it was like hundred two hundred bucks. Yeah, like yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, I got four of these already. So yeah. <laughs> he had a uh, that box set looked crazy, man. Tons of records on the back. Great packaging. So shout out to him because that's that's a nice purchase. Did you guys did you guys get a chance to sell some records yesterday? We yeah we sold a, sold a handful. You know everybody we sold a couple. I think it was a couple. Yeah. And um. When do I get mine? We got it at the house. I got it at the house. Perfect. Spools. I can't wait. To, I, I want to listen. I'm give it one listen. Well, is, are they sealed? And all so that? they are. They are lathe cuts. Yep. Okay. All so right. we are toying with the idea of getting jackets. Yeah. Because right now we don't have jackets for them. We only made pressed, what, 20 of them 20, total? I think 20. And we're all keeping one. So we pressed 20 of them. Um, so we only have There's like 10 Cubs left. fans, fools. There's all right. Cubs fan. That's yeah. what I'm talking yeah. about. Yeah. <laughs> There's another sh- Cubs fan. That's all right. Two. Okay. Okay. This place just got cooler. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, but we have, I think we have 10 left. Um, but they're late, they're, you know, cool laid picture discs. Um, All signed. I'm psyched to get mine, yeah. man, because I'm a, as yeah. a collector, I get to put that in my collection. Man. Matter of fact, Spools was the first person to purchase our album, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. He was the first person was to I go really? online. Yes. Huh. Yeah. You were the first person to go online and actually purchase it. Hello, sir. What up, Pretty man? good. And shouts to Jacob, because he, he's in the building as well. He actually copped one as well. Oh, nice. okay. So, yeah. Shouts Word. to Jacob. That's yeah. what's nice. up, man. Yeah, hey, we're talking about uh, sex. so this is the new old heads podcast, but Mike and I are on a um, in a band, electronic band of sorts Funk, called uh, Funk sex, Soul Hip Hop. Yeah, <laughs> called Section Leaders. We played yesterday here, and we're actually going to do a, a beat making session right after this, so that's going to be fun. But yeah, for those yeah. those uh, not familiar, was that your guys' first live performance as Section yes, Leaders? As yeah, Section Leaders, you guys correct. did a great job. It sounded good. Thank Co- you. Man. Cohesive. Um. I don't know, man. I thought I didn't realize Stacia was a part of it, but she adds a real cool element. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, man. So she did a lot of point. the. She did a lot of the triggering too, since we don't have a DJ. Okay. Yeah. Yep. You know? Nice. So she's so. she actually is very very important to make to keep us online, keep us in track. Yeah. And uh, hey, hey, there we go. There we go. That's All what right. I'm looking for, sir. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. That is what I'm looking for there right there. He's gonna set them up to the side for you. Oh man, let me take a look, cause that's. This is what I was talking about right here. Yes, this album is absolutely amazing. Mm-hmm. His solos, his solos on my favorite things are. Oh, oh he's bananas! It's a classic. Uh, my favorite jazz artist of all time is uh, Coltrane. So, yeah, you know, this is crazy. He found these two. How much is that? Yeah, I think I might have to. I might have to make a move on. Thank one you, of these. sir. Thank you, sir. Go Cubs, go That's as well. A, absolutely, man. <laughs> the guy's, the guy's awesome. Cubs <laughs> fan, and he brought great albums. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> Mike's going to go buy some candles for this one. Man, that's it right there. Yeah, you know I burn candles. <laughs> uh, hey, you know what, Mike? I burn candles, too. Thank you, Bradley. I appreciate that. It's a good mood-setting thing. We have uh, shouts to... We have this promo copy of Pete Rock. Uh, nice. you, read the front of it. All right, so this is Pete Rock, Return to the SP-1200. I'm assuming this is a dope beat tape with two sides of instrumentals. Unless there are rappers on it, I'm not sure. It says beats from 1990 to 1998, previously unreleased material available for the first time on vinyl. So it looks like these are exclusive joints. Yeah. Oh my God, he found another one. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right. <laughs> so, so this is a promo record store day only copy that we're going to be giving away. Yeah, uh, this is dope. So I think we need to like come up with questions or something, right? Uh, we could do that. We can come up with questions. Um, we need some great Pete Rock trivia. Right? Uh, how about... What did I say to Pete Rock to get him upset <laughs> with me on Twitter? Crossed my mind. Two uh, years ago. He no, definitely uh, got mad. Uh, and the funny thing about it was Lone has a autographed Pete Rock poster <laughs> that we had on the very next episode. The couple days after we after he got scolded by Pete Rock. Yeah. So I remember that. He was sitting in the chair like it was... Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, when Pete Rock scolds you, though, you have to. That's kind nah, of a he win. Was wrong. He was like, wrong. He was wrong, but it's kind yeah. of a win that he actually took the time to scold you, is what I'm saying. But he 100% was wrong. Yeah, he's a legend. Yeah, he was wrong. He's still an OG, though. Um, I don't know. Pete Rock trivia. Uh, what about someone that can name their first album? 
P Rock and CL Smooth. Is that too is that too light, Spools, or do we need to go deeper than that? I don't know. I mean, I, if somebody knows, I mean, do we have anything that's uh, personal? No, not personal, but what's a little deeper than just like? How the about first? this? Well, um, he had a cousin that was from Mount Vernon that was a very, very, very popular hip hop artist back in the nineties. I don't even know this answer. Yes, they were cousins. From Mount Vernon. From Mount Vernon. So. I don't know, man. And this guy's very, very popular. He had a group. Really? Yeah, they're cousins. Huh. Let's see here. Um, what about their probably his most famous song? Right. Mm. Uh, Troy, they reminisce over you. Right? Uh-huh. So what was the sample That's used a good for question. that beat? Oh man, that's a good question. If anybody knows either the the, uh oh, the, yep, uh, there you go. There it is. All right, All right. the winner. There the winner. It is. So congratulations, my man. That's he, yours, sir. That was quick too. That young man has been around <laughs> some. Wor- he's been around some wax, and he's listened to some hey hip hop. Hey man, you didn't you didn't came up this weekend, bro. You're doing well, man. <laughs> we appreciate you playing. But the artist I was talking about is Heavy D. Oh really? Pete Rock I and didn't Heavy know they D were are cousins. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. cousins. Both from Mount Vernon, so huh. uh, wow. <laughs> heavy, heavy D and the boys, man, they had some too. Uh, interesting. Yeah, so they're definitely related. Um, Do you guys remember the movie New Jersey Drive? I, you know what? Heavy, re- heavy D was in that movie. He was, but Uptown? I was Uptown I was, Heavy D. What's that? Uptown Heavy D. Yeah, yeah. heavy that yeah. Heavy D. Yeah, yeah. 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 Vanessa Sinquest. <laughs> <laughs> no? right. I'm sleep. You know what, spools? I got, I'm not gonna I got lie. Nothing lumb- with it. I got nothing but love for you. I Great know that. song. Yeah. 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 Uh, I was sleep on New Jersey Drive a little bit. I'll be honest. I got a copy at the crib if you want to borrow it. I might have to. Is it on VHS? No, it's on DVD. Have you upgraded to DVD? They started DVD players about <laughs> 20 or 25 years ago. I don't know if you've. You know, I, I was I was thinking VHS, but uh, if you do have the DVD, I'll just go out and buy a DVD player. Okay. I don't worry about that. You can borrow mine, too. I probably have s- several. So yeah, just yeah. give me one of yours refurbished, and yep. uh, I'll just take that in New Jersey Drive and go from there. Sounds good. Thank you. Does All that right. sound good, Long? Yeah. You're he, welcome. He brought over another record. Yeah, he said. brought... Let, let's see. So these are ballads. He said, if you want your... Uh, if you, you want to play this said, for somebody, said, this is the one. Put the candles on and put invite the candles your lady on. friend over. Yeah, he did a lot of work with uh, McCoy Tyner as well. So this is dope. Their, their quartet was crazy. But my favorite things is still, um, that's probably one. That one and uh, Love Supreme, those are the ones mm-hmm. for me. Uh, right. Great, great documentary on Netflix about John Coltrane. Narrated by, who narrates that one? Oh, man. Oh, dude. Denzel Washington. Denzel. Is it Denzel? Denzel, I think Denzel narrates that. Yeah, Denzel narrates okay. that one. Yeah, it's, it's dope. It's incredible. Like yeah. very it goes pretty in depth. I mean, he played with Miles Davis and yes, his he did. quintet and all that yes, uh, he did. for a long time, but um definitely worth checking out cuz it's personal too. You get to find out about him and how his style evolved, man, cuz I think he's well known for that very experimental kind of yep. out yep. there, but he didn't start that way. I see. There was actually one and this is not a spoiler cuz it's too he's too it's too much deep material on him, but there was a story where uh, one of his bandmates talked about when they would go to hotels, um, people would complain because he wanted to practice so much. He always practiced, always wanted to practice. So they got so many calls on him actually practicing that instead of him going somewhere to, to go practice, he would just go through all the fingerings for hours in a hotel room. Interesting. Like That reminds me of band class. Exactly. Man. But think about doing that for like eight hours without being able to play. Like, that's crazy. He could probably, he's probably can't. I could hear it in his head too. Exactly. Like he's just, yeah. I yeah. remember it, random story. I remember my, my freshman year in high school. Yes. So when we marched, so Mike and I went to the same high school in Anderson. Yes. And so we marched for Anderson, and uh, we both both played trumpet. And Lone, I fr- was, well, Lone was about five seven, just for the record. Now. I was about five three actually. Yeah, he had a growth spurt, but go ahead. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what was that first? What was our first piece that we played? Do you remember? Uh, uh, dun, 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 dun. Was it that? Um, I got music. Was it? Was it that? I, year? George Gershwin. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, George yeah, Gershwin. Yeah, George Gershwin. So I, I, I had the the fingerings for the very first part. It's like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and I, I had this like tick for like probably three months where I would just walk around and I would do this with my fingers yeah. because mm-hmm. I had to like, it was so fast. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I, and, and I could still do it. It's still there, but it's weird. Now that piece was heavy too. I remember that. Tried doing that while marching and 
remembering and the having, spots. Uh, having people thing. throw rifles over your head. <laughs> yeah, that I got hit in the back of the head. We're that ain't de- good. We're definitely band geeks. I, uh, that reminded me just from being a DJ and learning certain scratches, especially crab scratching. So yeah. crab scratching is taking your fingers across the fader and going like that. So it's oh, okay. I never do so that. I would sit there. I still do it, even though I don't DJ that much anymore. And I'll just I notice like on my car when I'm driving, I'll just yeah. Uh, or if I'm you know doing anything, it's just yeah, what is yeah, it called? Yeah, yeah. That scratch is called a crab scratch. Crab scratch. Mm-hmm. Okay, I've never heard that before. I learned. But something there's there. other scratches that use a similar technique, but the that is called a crab, where it's blah, 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 blah. And some see. people. Can, I mean, you know, metronome is he DJing, DJing up here later? Uh, uh, he so. He was going to. Uh, uh, we because of the rain delay yeah. of sorts ah, okay. today. We uh, things have been switched around so. Um, he might not make it. The store, I believe, the store's going to close a little early today. Okay. okay. So um, they can crab well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I see him in there. I, d- I never knew what that was called, but Cool Hand Lex, all those dudes can, uh, they can do that one. I was, I was never, never my, f- my forte, my my good one, right? Go to, but uh, it's a good one. Sounds good if you know mm-hmm. how to do it. So. Yeah, I don't. I definitely don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't even know what it was yeah, called. I so, yeah. I uh, I definitely learned something today. I had a. I, I, jotted down I hope so. <laughs> I jotted down a couple things. Uh, I wanted to run by you guys and see what you thought. Um, so with us being in a record store, I thought about the um, the concept of the importance of knowing, I guess, like the history of music. When you talk about cassettes and you go back to vinyl or, or eight track or whatever, like kind of talk about. I guess I'll go to you schools. Kind of talk about the importance of doing your homework in terms of just music, the, the evolution of music, because that helped me a lot. Yeah. You're talking about well, as a musician? or Well, just well as a musician or even as a fan of music, like I guess I'm that big of a nerd to be like, I wanted to go back and learn and, mm-hmm. and, and chronological in order to see how things happen. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Like that oh, was I, important to me. I certainly, I think that's extremely important, man. I'd like to see, I can't say for sure, I don't want to sound like an old curmudgeon, but I don't <laughs> I don't know if younger folks today do that as, right. all, as much. I, I, I hope so. My right. gut says probably not. I hope so. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But um, no, I think it's extremely important, man. I never, yeah. I'll put it this way, as a hip hop head since I was eight, I never would have come across what I now think is my favorite music, which is soul and yeah. funk, had yep. I not started with hip hop and done what you said, yep. traced back to, the you know, to other stuff, stuff like man. That. And then you right. find psych rock and then you find, you know, you know, obviously jazz is a whole other thing and blues and all that. So um, I think it's extremely important. Now, to your point about like the medium of the music, the way that it's, you know, a piece of vinyl versus an eight track versus a cassette or a CD or whatever. Um, I think that's interesting too because you get. Here's why it's interesting. Do you see? Do you see eight tracks in this store full of eight tracks? I do not see that eight was tracks a, in this that store. That was a another music medium that was y- that was used often. Yeah. So yeah. You got some oh eight yeah. tracks. Oh, yeah. you, you, oh, you guys yeah. do yeah. have eight tracks. Nice, okay. Nice. I stand corrected. Okay. <laughs> point being, there, the the point being was there's something about vinyl that it came back and it came back in a big way. I'm yeah. sure the yeah. two. Yeah. Folks in the back, Andy and Andy could tell they probably know why or have a really good idea why. But over the last what 10, 15 years, yeah, there seems to be this big resurgence in that medium specifically, yeah. vinyl. Um, I know some cats that make cassettes, or there's a few people that do that. But vinyls come back in a major way. Yeah, so. it, I mean it's like an art piece, yeah. you know, even more so. Even people, you know, like it became. I mean, it became cool. I mean, it really did become cool to like physically hold the piece, and if I think. The difference Read between liner notes, yeah, there you know, you like go. the CD versus the like, you know, like vinyl is just, I don't know, like there's just more value to it. It seems. Yeah, I agree. What you said about it being an art piece, I feel that way a lot, because now I've, I've I'll go to Michaels and buy like those three packs of record frames. Yeah, mm-hmm. and yeah. I have nothing like. <laughs> My place is, is is record framed out. Like that's what <laughs> to me they they are pieces of art. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, and that's when we put our lathe together. That was the goal with it. It wasn't like it was. It's go a, I mean, it's a lathe order. cut. You know yeah. what I mean? It's a mono lathe cut. It's not stereo. It's not vinyl. But right. you know, it's it's a piece of art. Yep. You know. You know, and it's one of twenty. Right. We're not going to make any more of it. You okay. know, and yep. that, that's kind of the exclusivity of Record Store Day, anyways. Really, kind of well, think about it. I mean, it. if you think about it, like so, that even goes into what Wu Tang did a couple years ago with you know. Music is art. 
Yeah. At the end of the day, I think sometimes with commercialization or whatever, you know, you, we, we lose sight of that. It's, it's seen as a product that needs to be consumed and X, Y, Z. But at the end of the day, it's it is art. Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. so so to see some of these more clever marketing, I guess, uh, strategies like with what Wu-Tang did, like what Griselda does with their exclusivity, with their stuff, yes. like what <laughs> section leaders did with just making, you know, 20 um I think that's great, man. And I think it brings that essence of music being art back. Yeah. And, and plus, it's real easy to stream, right? Mm. I mean, you can go and stream and get the digital version, you know, and it's going to, you know, it's handy. It's easy. Um, you don't have to rip it. You know yeah. what I mean? Right. It's, yeah. just, it's there, you know, so you can play play it if you want. or But most of the time you're going to consume it, to, most likely is going to be digitally. To so. Spool's point about the... Um, I guess the art from an art standpoint, yours as well, talking about the importance of that to me, um, just as a music connoisseur, is something about this, like mm -hmm. the back, yep. like being able to look at this and read, because I'm I'm a big enough nerd to, my mind goes back to when this came out. Like yep. I try to go back to what it was like then, for sure. And you know to see the exclusive photos and. You know, there's all there's like here there's what five, six, seven, eight paragraphs on the back of this and yep. the original liner notes. Like that is the type of stuff streaming can't get you. Yeah. Right. So titles trying, but it's not quite. This, it's not the same as holding something in your hand. There right. you go. Yep. And, there is something to be said for that, man. And then with spools to with spools talking about the frames, like to me that just brings it to life even more. You know what I'm saying? It just actually accentuates the art portion big you know time I mean? you're right you're 100 yeah. percent right to, like, to, that's a good point to make it really really and, you give, know there is the, feeling. i mean and don't get me wrong vinyl does sound more rich right? yeah it does oh yeah. yeah but i mean i i only buy vinyl to support artists at this yeah. point right you know like if it's somebody i like you be like all right cool i'm gonna buy this I, a lot of times i don't take it out of the packaging i'm very similar to the last uh i'll go listen to it digitally and you know yeah friends of mine i know that have pressed stuff i haven't taken it out yeah, dope. Um, that's dope. My man, uh, shout out to my man, Clinic. A couple years ago at a record store day, he got me a um, a big L unreleased, like a couple unreleased singles. Press, nice. Okay. Pressing. It's nice. it's packaged. I'm not nice. Yeah, it's yeah. art. It's a piece of art. Not gonna touch that one. New. No, yeah, please sitting, don't touch yeah. that one. Yeah. Did you uh, frame that one? Uh, no, I need to go. I need to go to Michael's, man. <laughs> <laughs> also, Sarah, <laughs> my Shout fiance. Out to I don't know what her uh, patience level is with too many more frames going up <laughs> on the walls, but you need to like yeah. yeah, you need to add on to the house just just for frames, just for well, frames yeah. on the wall. We my, were talking my, about my deal with it right now. Sorry, is anything I have that signed goes on the wall? Of I course, you. right? And then she was like, "Well, I like music." I was like, "Yeah, I know you like music." So. Let's frame the stuff you like too mm. on the other walls, mm -hmm. um, but that's only gone so far. So I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know <laughs> I don't know what else to do. So. Well, you know, we we all had a um, we had a great experience as well. Um, like Lily, <laughs> like Lily, with uh, Pharaoh Monch. Uh, we I think yeah. Spools had maybe I don't know four or five different joints, mm -hmm. and yeah, we we got a chance to hang out with him. And he was gracious and, and with his time and just sat there and just signed everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So For all of us, too. Yeah. I, I probably had, actually, man, I probably had six or seven pieces. Speed brought four or five. Yep. Good Thanks job, Mike. Red August. Thanks, Mike. Um, other, other DJs or people, you know, they brought their stuff, too. And he, I think artists like that, um, I had a very similar um, uh, experience with Scarface. Yeah. I think they like that. I think some of them are like, man, like you bought all this stuff, and yeah. it, you know, and I'm the one on it, and you're. This has got. It. Hopefully, they realize it's an experience for us. That, that's something I'm not ever going to forget. You know, right. I actually, uh, I have, the, I posted it on uh, on IG when he was signing it, and you can hear him be like, "Wow, whoa, wow!" Yeah. Like he was yeah. excited that, you know, someone took the time to actually go out and copy. Sure. Oh yeah, and keep them and yeah. keep them. Yeah. <laughs> when I like, met Scarface at the Vogue a few years back. Um, I brought a stack of records. Scarface, one of my definitely top five of all time for Not me. Not mad at that at all. So I, br I had a copy of a record that was from the Walking Dead movie soundtrack, and he did it. Like, he did oh, a really? song on that soundtrack. And when, I, when I gave him the record, uh, we were, like, just kind of chatting a little. And I go, um, I told him, I was like, I've never seen another copy of that. And he looked at me, and he goes, I've never seen this record before in my life. <laughs> yeah. Oh, whoa. So he was pretty surprised, and um, so he signed that, and then I gave it to our brother uh, Nick. Yeah. For his uh, 
I think it was for the 10 or 12 year uh, coaches. Okay. Just as something to commemorate. You That's know? tough. Yeah. But yeah. Anyways, yeah. point being. Cool experiences and um, stuff you don't forget, you know. Right. Yeah, that's tough right there. Like, who has that? Like, you <laughs> you hit a gym right there because for him to react like that tells you everything you need to know. Uh, shout out to the homie Grits in the building. Section Leaders is uh, My man. member here as well. Must be raining, huh? Just a little bit, huh? Or are you crying? He might be crying. He emotional, so I don't know. Are you crying or is it raining? But oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Right, that's that's awesome. I that's mean, you good. Know, crying, you know, emotions are great. Yeah, you know. Get it out, brother. If you need yeah. to go to the back, yeah, yeah it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you're in a you're in a safe place, Clarence. <laughs> Let it out, brother. Um, I'm trying to think. Since okay, so since we're in here, we are obviously surrounded by great music. Um, Spools, talk about and this is not genre specific. Mm-hmm. Just give me. No pressure. Just some of your favorite albums, um, all time, like any genre. Like any be, genre. Yeah, it doesn't all have time. to be. It doesn't have to be top five. Just something that stood out to you or has had an impact on your life musically. Mm, Nick Drake, Five Leaves Left. Okay. Has been has had an impact on my life. Um, Sublime, Robin the Hood. Mm. Has had an impact on my life. Um, Wu Tang, Thirty Six Chambers. Yes, sir. Not mad at that. Uh, Doctor Octagon by Cool Key. Cool Key. That's a and that's a hip hop name. And I think he's gonna be here later this year too. Oh, is word. He? That's awesome. Yeah, okay. Wrong, this is so tough because I could sit here and go off for a whole. <laughs> bit. I'll pick one more and I'll say. Okay. Kind of hit a few different genres. How about? Because there's a million others. Uh, Fleetwood Mac, Rumors. Nice. Nice. All right. That's pretty good, Long. Give me, just give me a handful. How about Ooh. Illmatic by Nas, too? How about That's it? six. Yeah. How about it? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm going to say Like Water for Chocolate by Common. Yes. That was an amazing album. Still is one of my favorite hip-hop albums, probably. We got that album at the same time, as a matter of fact. That's another story for another day. Yeah. Uh, yeah we got that one at the same time. That one, I would say, uh, it's one of their newer ones, but I would say In Rainbows by Radiohead. Mm. I think I, I like that you're a, a Radiohead fan. I think that's cool. Yeah, Radiohead's really, really dope, man. <clears throat> where does, real quick, not to jump, but where does Kid A which one is Kid A? Is that, their, is that their first? I think that's their first one. Yeah, it's actually lower on my list. Is it? I because think I like a. their I like their more electronic sound. Gotcha. It's just a little more experimental. Yeah. Um, I just like I, I don't know just their their rhythms and the music and Tom York just the way they I yeah. don't know it's just different. Like Word. after that album is just different to me. Sure. Um, Sorry. So, but yeah, uh, in Rainbows just because of when where I was when I heard it, it was actually my introduction to them outside of like, you know, Creep and um, I think I heard, uh, what's the talk show host song? Yeah. Which um, was dope. From, um, I forget what that was from, but. Romeo and Juliet. Is that what it was The from? movie on the soundtrack, yeah. But, so I had heard those two songs, but then I heard that album, I was like, whoa, this is amazing. Um, Man, even in the last year, man, Saba's Saba's care for me was really good. Yeah, um, I really, really like that one a lot. Um, Mick Jenkins from last year, "Pieces of a Man," was an amazing record. That guy's um, very extremely talented. I feel like I need a big crit album on my list somewhere, but that's yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'd, not mad at that. I'd probably like if I go deeper. You know, I really well, man. I don't remember the name of the album though. But I had my parents were like big rock heads, mm. and. There was a Doors album yeah. that my dad had, or maybe my mom, I don't remember, but I I played the hell out of that record. Can, oh. you, picture oh, yeah. the, can you picture the cover of it? I can't, but it's got all the like the main joints on it. Okay. Um, like Love Her Mad. I'm a big... Sarah's like favorite band is The Doors. Okay. Oh, okay. So if you guys Word. have been in the basement, have you seen that Doors album that's in a frame on the wall? I don't remember. I probably wasn't paying attention. It's, yeah. a, it's a pretty... It's a more rare one, uh, but... Uh, I gave that to her like on our third or fourth date, but she's a huge fan. Another album that was integral, I think, was was uh, probably Merz 316. Oh man, the ninth, ninth edition. wonder. Only because it opened me up to West Coast hip hop, um, and it was right around the time Little Brother was getting big, 
And so I'm a huge Little Brother fan. You Shout know, Fonte, to Fonte and, and, Pooh, Nice Wonder. Yeah, so that kind of opened me up to go down, like, a path. We talked about, you know, f- how finding one artist leads to the next and so forth like that. Like, that finding Murs opened me up to Living Legends, opened me up to... Uh, joining a me- like a record store uh, message board called Access in out of San Diego. Yeah, and then I met people through there and like. I remember oh. getting hip to all those dudes too. It was about '03. Blue and Exile is another one, man. Yeah. Below, Below the, the heavens. heavens. Are they West? They're, are they from the West Coast? Yeah, L.A. Yeah. and yeah. L.A. I believe. That's a masterpiece to me. Those living that legends crazy. dudes have a good little following of their own. The yeah. Grouch and Eli the and Mers Eli. and uh, El- um, Scarab and all those dudes. Yeah. yeah. I think Mers actually officially bowed out of the Living Legends a few oh, years yeah. ago. But I, I, met, mean, I met Mers once. I met him. Hopefully he's a cool dude. Well. He, he seems like he's a cool dude. Super cool dude. Yeah, he's, he's nice to me. Yeah. Good. Good. 2003 Scribble Jam. Okay. Nice. Yeah. He was here like a few years ago. Oh, was he? Yeah. yeah we co promoted a, a show that he was at. Nice. So yeah. Him and uh, I think Fashan. Oh, word. Yeah. So Merz is super talented, man. Yeah. Very. Very. What about you? What about you? Mike, Sean, you got any others? Or is it Mike? I mean, I, again, like you, I could keep going. Uh, Pink Floyd, The Wall. You could put that one on my list. Yeah. I, yeah, I could like. Yeah, I could keep going. But I, nothing really. I mean, Nirvana's first album, I mean, or well, never mind, yep. um, was big when that came out. Just because, you know, my age and where yeah. I was, right. you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'll just stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I gotta have one more. Black Star. Uh, black on both sides. No, that's no. that's uh, most deaf. Oh, that's most deaf. I'm tripping. Uh, but Black Star. It was Talib Kweli and most deaf. Yeah. Yeah. Black Star. Yeah. That album. Man. With like respiration. Respiration. Crazy. And then Thieves in the night. Oh yeah. Yeah. Kos and. I'm with that. Yeah. I'm with that. Um, it's funny. Spool said. Uh, he said Pink Floyd. Uh, Dark Side of the Moon. I like that. That's uh yeah that's extremely nice. dope. Yeah. Extremely dope to me. Um uh kinda blue Miles Davis. Like I could listen to that, just put it on. Don't have to change it. Like all what five or six joints on there. Like I could listen to that, don't have to change it. Uh AT Aliens, uh Outcast is in there. Um this yeah. Al Green album is called I'm Still in Love with You. You got a white yeah, suit on. Yep. It's all white. My mom used to play that album all the time, um, so that one would be there. And I don't, I can't think of any specific BB uh, King albums, but my mom used to play BB King heavy when I was a kid. So that's how I got into the blues and stuff like that. Like she used to, I can still see. We used to take trips down south. My mother's from Mississippi, and like we'd be, I can hear those joints right now, like riding, like riding down south. So. Those are a couple albums for me, man. Some hip-hop, good ones, man. Both hip- you guys had some great ones. Hip hop wise, you know, we can all go on for days. You oh, said yeah. Thirty Six Chambers. You said Illmatic. He knows our connection, like Water for Chocolate. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I don't know what you know. It's kind of with those. There's there's just so many that stick out. Ready to Die. Oh yeah. Reasonable Doubt. You know uh, what I'm saying? Flying, like, flying Lotuses until the quiet comes is really good. Mm. Uh, DJ Shadow's end, introducing DJ Shadow is an unbelievable album. RJD2's Dead Ringer. Yep. That's, a, uh, that's really good. Music by Cave Light by uh, Blockhead. Yeah. Um, Actually, the listing by Little Brother is uh, yeah. that yeah. one. I, my, my guy, that Carlo, let me hear that when we were sitting is in the park. Is that better than the minstrel show, you think? It's hard uh, to compare them, man. It's hard to compare them. Uh, they had I, grown on the minstrel show. I like the growth. minstrel show a little bit more, probably. That was my intro to Little Brother. The yeah, minstrel the minstrel show. show. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's that's a very good intro. See, yeah. that was that was the era of like Napster. So like, I didn't even have the listening, but I had a whole bunch of random MP3s mm-hmm. because I was like, oh, these dudes are dope. Yeah. And I just went out and just grabbed everything I could. Yep. Yeah. I didn't know what was on anything for like five years. Yeah. They had a song <laughs> called yeah. Speed on the Speed, listening. That yeah. Was, Speed messed me up. Like that was the one where I was like, "Yo, who are these dudes?" Too like, fast and then I found out they were from uh, North Carolina. I'm like, "How? Like, how are <laughs> the, how are these dudes with this heavy East Coast influence from North Carolina making yeah. this dope music?" So, yeah. uh, but now, nah, man, it's, hey, it's, the South got something to say. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's all I got to say. Yeah, man. You there's there's so many. You can go Underground Kings, UGK. Oh man, you know what I'm saying? Like I got on them late, but Ghetto Boys. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's this regional music for days. Oh, we yeah. didn't get out west yet, but that's Twister, Chicago. Yeah, Jill and Rush, classic to me. Yeah, that is a dope album. That yeah, album is crazy. Jill Rush, I listen to it right now. Yeah, so, yeah, it's amazing. There's none. Yeah, that I can still listen to that one. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to think. I, huge, huge, I'm a huge, from? huge, huge Mac Dre fan. Oh, oh, West Coast, West and Coast. The whole yeah. Mac Dre, that whole movement. Uh, his music, big, big, big fan of his man, and Forty, and a lot of the, a lot of the cats from the Bay. So, hey, Lone, yeah. how many albums do you Forty got out? I don't know, but they all he's probably got <laughs> a good seven million, <laughs> <laughs> and I think everyone has at least forty five songs on it. Minimal. I yeah, think he's got he's got one to five albums dropping this year. I think does he? So, yeah. Man, he stays uh, uh, in the studio. He's busy man. Forty he, forty is Spools and I were talking about this yesterday too. We had a good conversation outside the store uh, about moguls, music moguls that we'd like to talk to. Yeah. You know, just for just a conversational piece, just to, you know, just to get some jewels from, learn, get some knowledge from. And we were going through names, and we both agreed on E-40 as being high on our list. Oh, yeah. And Master yeah. P, I believe we agreed on as being high as well. Jay Prince is on my yeah. list, high on my list. Yeah, like those those guys, I'm sure, have just jewels, man. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like Quest Love. Yeah. Fonte, yeah. probably just because he's... Interesting. He's very interesting. You know, ninth. You yeah. know, um, you know who I'd want to talk to, man? I think uh, if you guys remember Tony Draper. That's the South. Yeah. Right? Hmm. Swisher House. Like, Swisher not House. Swisher House, but. Um, Swab House? Swab, Swab House. House. Yeah. Hmm. A-ball very A-ball smart. These were all just independent minded guys that um, made it happen in a big way. Right. Worked real hard and they're still around today and their names are real good you know what i mean like they're solid you know so you know it's crazy the uh would it's sad that we have to say this but the late great nipsey hustle yeah. uh actually named a lot of the guys that you were talking about like when he's at the breakfast club he said p i think he said draper he talked about um uh j prince mm-hmm. e40 all these guys were influences on him to stay independent yep. until you get to the point where I guess if you want to sign a deal or whatever, but his entire grind up until Victory Lab was yeah. independent. Michael Michael Watts from Texas. Yeah. Um, yep. Heavy in there. Guys are familiar with a cat named Corey Moe from Texas. He's another dude that it just, you know, these guys who just, you know, too short. Too <laughs> short. I mean, you know, he wasn't always independent, but. But still, yeah. Talk too short is like 50 what? Mm hmm. 52, 53 years yeah. old, like still touring and getting bread. Like you know, clearly talking to Jay Z would be fantastic. Yeah, um, yeah. Puff, um, sure. Yeah. Russell, sure. Russell Simmons. I mean, Rick Rubin. I Rubens, think uh, Quincy I think Jones, man. Some more interesting people, man. Like Open Mike Eagle would be interesting. Yeah, he would be. You know, he he tour he came here. Uh, we booked him and Homeboy Sandman and Mega Ran probably 2012 mm-hmm. Metronome and I did at the sabbatical actually right when sabbatical used to be over there. Yeah. And so he came out, and uh, he's an interesting guy, man. Mm-hmm. I like him. He's got a new show on like Comedy Central or something, or nice. something. I don't, I don't know. John mm-hmm. Wa- John Wayne would be cool. John Wayne would be interesting. Yeah, he's a kind of a quiet dude. Mm-hmm. Real yeah. sharp. Seems yeah. real smart. These are all what I call, uh, what I've always called, lone lone <laughs> artists because he dig lone will dig through the crates and find, you know what I'm saying, artists from all over the world that have like, he'll he'll know them from when they have a hundred supporters to when they're international you know and i that those are the guys that i'm like i don't know who this person is but i'm sure they're very very popular and make dope music just because you you're running them off that fast like that's that category yeah well you know what i'm saying you know <laughs> maybe i should do my research and get caught up huh? yeah you should we just talked about that didn't we it's out there it's, out <laughs> <laughs> it's, out there. So. it's definitely out there red august how you doing man i would ask you about albums but you don't have a microphone <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We, we usually have you mic'd up, so we can we can actually wrap up here shortly. Can we yeah. wrap up? Let's yeah. do that. Let's wrap up. Well, let's shout out um, our partners as always. Shout yeah, out to sure. BringingDownTheBand.com. There's always a hub. Indie CD and Vinyl <laughs> is a partner of ours as well. Thank you all for what you have done in terms of our yes. uh, raffles and for having us today as well. Shout out to No Bad Ideas. We got a hat from them here. They always take care of us, as always. Printfinity. And they're local. No yes, bad they're local. local. Yes, indeed. So. Our, our homie, uh, DJ J. Diff, who's not on, not with us today, he had a prior engagement, but he's the, the fourth new old head. He has Printfinity also. 
printing company does awesome. t-shirts and uh, design and stuff like that. So shout out to him. Who am I shout missing? Shout out to our fifth new old head, Jay Moore, who's Jay over Moore. at Academics right now holding it down. Yes. So, yep. so shout out to Jay Moore as well. We we appreciate what he does. And um, Our Patreon, it. man. Oh, shout out to the yeah. patrons as well. Yes, patreon.com backslash new old heads. Uh, we have tons of raffles. Where yep. we, we raffle off items, uh, exclusive content there. So, you know, look that up. We'd love to have you guys join the community. Got a community on Facebook where we toss around some things also. Um, so if, you wanna, if you're involved with that, we got all the information here. We can get you hooked up. That's right. So, yeah, and of course, Red August, you know. Got to shout out Red August. Like we said, he, he'll, he'll uh, pretty much tape anything, record or take photos for anything. <laughs> That is going to do it for this uh, episode here. Again, we appreciate Indy, CD, and Vinyl for having us yes, out here. thank you. Thank you. For the new old heads. DJ Spools, Longevity. I am Major 7th, and we will see you all next time. We appreciate the love. Yes, peace. Peace. Happy Get record story. the fuck! Right now. What's up, everybody? This is Major 7th from the new old heads. Uh, Longevity is here. DJ J. Diff is here. Uh, who else? Jay Moore is in the building. Red August is behind the camera, as always, doing his thing. It is raffle time for our patrons. We got two hats from No Bad Ideas. We also have two records from Indie CD and Vinyl. So, Longevity is going to do the mix up so we can pick some names and see who's going to be rewarded with the, uh, the new merch for this month. So, right now. Yes. Vinyl raffle for February. So Eric, Eric is the winner for the wax. Kate Renata, what's the name of this one? Nothing like you. This is <laughs> this is an instrumental joint, right? Kate Renata. I don't know what's on it. It has chances, and it was meant. Those are two joints. Okay, cool. Kate Renata got heat though, so that's a good pickup. Are we now? Does this come? He's gonna get both, right? Or are we just, or just separate? Just the wax? Okay, you're right. I've been I've been doing this a long time. I should know. All right, to the next one. For the hat, no bad ideas. This one's this one's out there right here. I they even got the the uh, design on the bill too. This is dope. Who we got? Chris Barnett is the winner. No bad ideas. Snapback. This is yours. So what's up? What is Chris? That's Chris's nickname. We gotta look that up. Kato. Kato, you are a winner. I see you, Jay Boar. So we're going. We're going second wax. All right, this one is Ned featuring Guilty Simpson. Don't know who it is, so thank you. Uh, MPMED featuring Guilty Simpson, Child of the Jungle. These are loan artists. I don't know who this is. He should know who M.E.D. is. M.E.D. is a Stone Throw artist. Done a lot of work with Mad Lib. Yeah. So, so Child of the Jungle comes from the first song that they were featured on. If you if you if you remember, Jay Dilla and Mad Lib put out a project called um, J Lib. And so, way way back in the day, Guilty Simpson was kind of Dilla's artist. M.E.D. was Mad Lib's artist. And the first joint that they put out. Um, that they were featured on together was called, I believe, Child of the Jungle, nice. or something along those lines. So this is the, the look, this is a little collaboration. This is actually a really good project. So yeah. I'll let you talk. I'll let you talk now that now that I've given the history. Thank you. I definitely was sleep. Produced by Mad Lib, Black Milk, Knots, Kareem Riggins, Apollo Brown, and more. So that's a dope lineup right there, production wise. James Nave. Got you a record. He cleaning up, man. He's got some. I think he's rolling a couple wax joints. Last drawing. No bad ideas. Hat. Colorful joint right here. S. Yes, she does. She be cleaning up. Dope artist as well. Got a chance to talk to her about that at uh, record store day. She's she's nice with it. She's nice with it. So, yeah, this is dope, man. So we got all our winners here. When's our, our, what, next month we'll have another one? Is that right? 
hey man we appreciate you guys rocking with us thanks for all the support in the community make sure you go to bring it up not bring it out to um you can but uh patreon back patreon backslash new old heads um did i miss anything else no bad ideas any cd and vinyl shout out to them both those are partners of ours they've been taking care of us for a while now and we appreciate that support keep rocking with us we appreciate it thank you peace